Hello again, you're welcome back to the channel. If you are new, I'm world. I'm a third year medical student of the University of Abado. And in today's video, I'm going to be sharing study strategies and tricks that will help you learn biology more effectively, faster, and even help you ace your biology exams. These are the study strategies I personally use to study most of my medical school courses. And since biology is like a precursor to many of these courses, I believe it's going to be of great help to you if you put them into good use. So let's get into to it. First, let me quickly talk about the nature of biology. If we compare biology with other basic sciences like physics and chemistry, most of them we argue that biology is the simplest and I kind of agree but biology is the subject that requires most study time when compared to the other two because biology has a whole lot of facts to memorize as well as things to understand. So to consistently do well in biology there are three main things you should focus on. First, you should learn how to understand biology concepts. Second, you should learn how to memorize facts. And thirdly, you should learn how to reproduce what you've studied when you need to. This is the essence of studying in the first place. I'm going to be taking these three in part. Let's go with the first part, how to understand biology concepts. To give it time. Biology is quite bulky and it requires time. And you need to give this time. Many students make the mistake of just trying to skim through biology. This is a very wrong approach to biology because in most of the biology topics, there are main ideas. And if you understand these main ideas, you can always work things out in exams. Biology requires time. Give it the time it requires. Number two is to use elaboration. It has been scientifically proven severally that our brain learn and retain information for a longer period of time when the information makes sense to us. So elaboration means giving details to a particular information to make it make more sense to you. But let me give you this example. I met a non-biology student and I told him that airworm has hydrostatic skeleton. This might not really make much sense to him and he's very likely to forget it in a matter of days. But if I go on and give him details of what that really means, I told him, okay, do you know what skeleton is? Skeleton is the framework of the body, that's why I'm standing like this. Edsom also has a skeleton, but doesn't have the kind of skeleton we have. The skeleton of Edsom is hydrostatic. Hydro means water, static means stable. It means it is the water in the Edsom that makes up its skeleton. The person is less like, likely to forget. Another thing you can use is using the etymology of words to make them make sense and to understand them. So you'll be able to retain them for a longer period of time. I believe you agree with me if you're a biology student that biology is like a language on its own. It has a lot of vocabularies and terminologies. So one way to learn biology is to break down the etymology. Etymology means the origin of words. Let's say for example, you saw the word platy, L means since for the first time. Now you cannot break this word down, platy and L means is. So what is platy? Platy means flat, flat like pleats. And L means means warm. So you can know that, okay, platy, L means since means flat, warm. The same goes for words like hypertension, hyper, above, normal, tension means something is tense. So from this etymology from this word you can bring out the meaning of the word and in some cases you do not even have to know the etymology you can make it up yourself for example this particular word i saw it when i was studying physiology the other day esotism i'm not even sure of the pronunciation but the word means excess growth of air like if you've seen people that have so much air on their body it's called esotism but this is what i i did i just look at the word and see what it looks like h-i-r i just put a i make it a and su i make it shoot so i can say air shooting out of someone that's the word esotism that's where the word is derived from and that's not where it is derived from obviously but this way i can never forget what esotism is even if I can't remember the word, if I see it anywhere, I can know oh, this is exactly what this word means. So, in essence, anytime you are studying biology, you should be studying with a dictionary or with your internet. Anytime you see any strange word or any strange term, don't just keep it and go. Make sure you search it and know what that word means. Elaborate. Because the more you know, the easier it becomes for you to learn more. Most of these things, they are interconnected and if you have enough knowledge, you will find biology very very simple to understand. Another way to understand things is by studying diagrams. Anytime you are studying, always try to check this diagram because the diagram just gives you what exactly has been explained in words and things that you could not even get from the words, you can get it better from the diagram. 
Now to the second part, how to memorize facts. Biology as it has a lot of concepts, it also has a lot of facts. For example, if I told you that the average blood pressure is 120 by 80 millimeter mercury, there's nothing to understand. I've just told you a straight fact. You have a lot of facts to memorize in biology. So how do you memorize this fact? First step is to make the fact easily accessible is by jotting down important facts that you are very likely to forget or putting them in flashcards. The reason for jotting it down is not just to jot them down and forget it. It is for you to recall it at interval and when you realize I can't remember this thing, you check it again. So if you do that over and over again in spaced interval, you are going to get to the point where you do not even need to check up what you've written anymore, the thing just sticks. Step number two is to use memory cue and link information together. Memory cue is anything that makes an information easily retrievable. You can imagine memory cue as this, putting a book in a library. On the book you are putting in the library, you've attached a string to the book. So when you want to look for that particular book, you just drag the string out. So the string is like a memory cue. It is attaching something to another information that makes it easily retrievable. For you to use memory key effectively, you must have understood what the information is about. Then the memory key is just to help you remember it. One way of using memory key is by using acronyms or acrostics. So in acronyms, one word is represented by one letter to remember a list of things. For example, secondary school biology. When we're learning the characteristics of living things, you must have heard of Mr. Niger Dark where each of those letters are for a property of living sin and i can still remember all of them till this moment because of that so you should use acronym but when using acronym be careful not to use too many acronyms that you remember the acronym but you can't remember what the acronym stands for there's something i always do. i always visualize the acronym and make it physical but this is a large topic and i don't want to talk about that in this video so you should subscribe so as not to miss any of my subsequent video and like this video if you are genuinely finding it helpful. Another way is by linking and this is also very important. Our brain naturally works this way. It links new information with old information we've already had. So you should be actively trying to do this. Anytime you read something, try to link it with something you've learned before that is related and interconnected. Doing this is going to strengthen the connection between those information and you are going to remember the facts for a longer period of time. The last part is how to remember what you've studied. So how do you remember biology? The first one is active recall. Active recall is simply bringing out things from your memory without consulting any book or the material which you read it from initially. So there are different ways to practice active recall. I'm going to talk about it very briefly. So there are different ways, it depends on what you want. So this is an example of what I personally do. I just, after reading, I may be doing something else entirely. I'll just try to bring out the information from my head and try to organize it in a particular sequence. Another way to practice active recall is by trying to write out what you've learned. Write it out on paper. When you are doing this, you're going to try to reinforce the connection and you're going to find gaps between your knowledge. You can quickly go back to your study material and fill in these gaps. Another way to practice it is by using flashcards like Anki. Another way is teaching. When you teach someone, you are helping yourself learn as you are helping the other person too. So you could teach yourself or teach another person. Another way to remember is by practicing past questions. Past question is very very important. In most cases, the past question will give you a clue of how the exam is going to look like. So try to look for the past question specific to so the kind of exam you are writing. If you are in university and you are writing a particular exam, try to look for the past question the lecture has set for the previous set that sounds so long i think that's the end of today's video thank you for watching if you are not subscribed yet could you believe that more than half of the people that watch my videos are not subscribed to this channel so if you are among those please kindly click on the subscribe button now like this video and share it with another student that you think might find it helpful peace out